Hey guys, what's going on? Today I'm going to be going through a little bit of vocal sampling and splitting using the slicer and fruity slicer. You can also use just the playlist like this because you're going to open up an acapella and you'll find something a lot like this. And this is just a waveform uh, sample from the song Crying in the Rain by the Nordic Stars. I'm also going to use this exact ac acapella for a future remix tutorial. Um, kind of like um, what it would be like a tribute to one of my most viewed videos uh, which is how to make a remix so I'm just gonna I'm gonna be making a future tutorial about that um, kind of like a follow-up but anyway I just wanted to let you guys know that I'll be using this particular song unless I find something better alright so to the point at matter the first thing you have to do um, before you do anything is to find what tempo the acapella is playing at uh, of course this is an original song so you can kind of tap it out you can have the entire song play and all you can do is just and that will kind of that'll show you what you're tapping at I think that was the first things I I used to use um, back when I started FL Studio so that is right click on the tempo and hit tap um, you just hit the tap thing here and um, if you have the song playing in the background just tap the beat with your mouse and that will give you your tempo um, I forgot to mention that as well, and I kind of stopped using it, I'm not sure why. Anyway, so we kind of figured that out. Um, next thing you have to do, you have to align it. Now, a lot of songs will actually have it all perfectly aligned for you. You just put it, you just, you know, you plonk it down on the playlist, and it's already good to go, especially if it's at the right tempo. But um, that's not always the case, so what you normally do is hit the magnet, then hit none, and then what happens is you don't have any lock on so you can just freely move the sample from left to right and what you would do to align it is you know you have these lines on the playlist the dark lines are uh, kind of markers for each ending of a measure um, the lines between those the three ones as you can see here it's the quarter measures and within those are like sixteenths of a measure I believe um, or eighths nope sixteenths yeah I know how to count so um, that's the first thing once it's all aligned, um, you can just you know get a kick or whatever, but you don't have to. Once it's aligned, you want to start your your splitting and all that stuff. So what you can do is just take the knife here, uh, slicer up here, and then uh, of course your magnet is still at none. What you can do is slice it up very precisely. Um, any type of word or syllable you want to keep for your looping effect or whatever you want to do stutter effect with the vocals um, now that's okay if, if you're comfortable with that of course I do it a lot when I'm producing I'm not really sure why I think it's because I'm mostly lazy and I just like to look at the waveform and put it exactly where I want to have it um, but yes that is one way of doing it now I guess before I go into the fruity slicer I'll give you a quick pre preview of what the vocals actually sound like of course, know that I don't own these vocals. This I downloaded a remix pack totally available to me. It wasn't a torrent um, download. So anyway, here's what it sounds like. Left me here out in the rain, but in my heart the love remains. Left me here out in the cold, a riddle that I never saw. Anyway, that's enough. Um, so okay, what you would do is you would want to up, open up Fruity Slicer now you can just go into channel add one Fruity Slicers right here you open that up and you'll have something like this it seems pretty useless at first but the only thing you have to do is hit this folder button here and load sample um, now all you have to do then is look for that sample wherever it is saved on your computer uh, I'm already at the direct folder so I just gotta hit the sample that I want which is course A and part B and you'll have the sample here already perfectly sliced up uh, via or via wherever you're from uh, the free slicer now if you look on the step sequencer all of a sudden you have this stairway of, of just something that looks a lot like the piano roll um, but it's it's not because if you look up here to the left um, it's not P 
pianos, it's you, you could you could have pianos if you just hit the A B C thing, but we're gonna keep it to slice numbers here. Um, and if you hold them on like that, you will actually hear what what they are like, what they sound like. Um, so let's see what's going on here. Okay, there we go. Um, but yeah, so I'll just kind of quickly play what it will sound like. It should sound relatively normal to um, what we just heard. Um, but they're all sliced up into their own little spot. Um, I'm gonna take up the kick there. So yeah, I'll just get you guys to listen to that. You left me here, I'm crying in the rain. And then there's a pause. Without your love, I'll never be the same. Ends around here, another pause. Cause I can eat and it'll just kind of keep doing that. You'll hear that there's a little kind of tick thing going on between each uh, section. Um, and that, that's okay because what we're trying to do is we're trying to make either a stutter or a loop effect. Um, I think I have an idea of where I want to do this. Um, I guess all you have to do is be creative and use your imagination. That's, that's key. Alright, so I'm just going to kind of delete some of the things that I know I probably won't use. If I do use it, I can always go back and get it later. So I can just take these off. Alright, so let's see. Yeah, you can basically do stuff like that. But uh, of course, that's just me clicking. Um, that's that's a good way to just kind of get yourself started. Uh, play around with it for a while, and I'll just delete all that. I'll see if I can reproduce what I just did um, with the clicking and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's a lot like the piano roll. It's a lot like making a melody. Uh, what you probably want to consider is um, having the notes, you know, the, the green bars here, to align with the you know with the lines or the grid uh, a lot like making a melody on the piano roll and that'll help you stay on beat uh, more than anything so that's why I kinda like using the slicer every once in a while or why it's efficient so that right there I believe is the tempo So to get yourself kind of started, what you can do definitely is, um, okay, I don't know what just happened here. The slices just decide to change its uh, its look, but that's all right. Um, all right, so so you can have a kick being like that if you want um, to get yourself a little a little more referred to of what it'll sound like. So yeah, I'm I'm doing this a lot like, um, or at least I'm placing the notes a lot like I would place it on the piano roll making a melody. But instead of having a normal instrument, I have vocals. And every single slice usually has its own tone. Those are different tonalities. Um, so you can kind of play around with that and make it kind of sound like um, more electronic where you have different tones. You can also use something like new tone that will um, actually change the tone of the sample uh, the way you like it to be. Uh, of course, I think with FL Studio 10, it's just a demo, so you can't actually say what you've done. But if you buy it, then I guess you, you would have it. All 
All right, so you'd have something like that. Um, I, I, I suggest you don't just keep looping that over and over because that gets really annoying. Try to keep it as, um, you know, keep it kind of simple at first, like the first measure is pretty simple. Um, and then just go crazy from there and try to kind of go all over the place, keep your foot, you know, um, everywhere. I, I kind of lost my my train of metaphoric expressions there, but um, I hope you get the idea anyway. I can see how much more I can actually do with this. Um, and then maybe have a baseline or something. I know I'm running on a little bit of time, so you can guy you guys can just leave the tutorial now if you want, close up the video, but I'm just gonna keep going. I know this is supposed to be a tricks and tips tutorial, it's supposed to be short, so that's why I'm kinda letting you guys off. But if you want to keep watching uh, for, for further information or just you know, want to see what else I can do with this, I'm just gonna keep going. So here we go. Anyway, uh, that'll do for now. So I guess the next step, once you kind of have that loop done, you can copy paste whatever you've done. Or um, I, I suggest you you go even further with this. And um, the longer your loop is, the better, and the more diverse and dynamic it is. Again, uh, the better. Um, usually for a baseline for something like this, just kind of a stutter, repetitive um, loop effect, the baseline would be just constant. It wouldn't really have much of a harmony. Um, that's not a that's not a bass, is it? All right. So what you normally do is have just this long kind of same note hitting over and over. Uh, of course, what note you do hit depends on the the key of the song, so that's also something you want to know, especially for remixing. Uh, I remember that this song is in an F major, so I'm just going to have F hitting over and over, and it should be just fine. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> that that'll, that pretty much sums it up. Alright, now, so for effects, what you would do uh, to the, the chorus or whatever sample you have, effects would consist of reverb, delay, and cutoff, you know, filters and stuff like that. Uh, I'm actually not sure, because if you're doing this kind of loop thing, you probably wouldn't even want any delay because, you know, everything's just kind of switching very quickly. You might have a little bit of reverb, but don't wash <coughs> the sample in reverb. Um, it's not really necessary. You could have some chorus. Chorus seems to do the job quite nicely, I find. Um, also, stuff like Stereo Shaper, just for, you know, having a nice stereo image. Um, who knows? Um, new tone, like I said earlier, you could do you could do that to change the tone of the of whatever vocal you're working with. Um, that's about it. As for EQ goes, of course, you would probably just cut off some of the low end, and uh, you want to brighten up the higher higher end. So it's always good to have your vocals a little brighter.
So I hope that helps you guys a little bit. Um, that's pretty much all I have to show you guys for for now. Uh, that's pretty much how you, you know, mess around with loops and stuff like that. So Fruity Slicer, that's how it works. You can also use the playlist, like I said, using your own slicer and slice it up whatever way you want. Um, if you have any further questions, let me know. I'm always open to new tutorials. This was actually a requested tutorial by someone today, so I'm always glad to um, help out a lot of people like that. Um, although there are some people who requested things that I just I tried um, I usually do consider anything that someone asked but um, what happens is I'm not <laughs> I'm not an expert in, at everything of course um, especially when they ask for genres that I don't usually uh, produce myself uh, you know stuff like dubstep and electro and drum and bass on house and stuff like that I know how it works and I have a basic concept because electronic music all kind of have uh, they're all kind of relatives, right? So some things you may learn in trance and, and you can use it in the house or just a general electronic music knowledge that can work with everything. But, um, you know, a lot of the times I just say there are better tutorials out there than I could ever make, so just look it up. But um, if there really isn't and you really want me to explain something, um, I'm usually too insecure to do it as a full tutorial. I do try, but uh, what I'd usually do is just do an individu individual thing uh, with someone over Skype or just inboxing through YouTube or whatever you like. So I do do that. Um, but anyway, that's enough. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. This was Tricks and Tips 3, I, I believe. Um, so you guys leave me any suggestions for, for future tips and tricks. If, um, I usually like to just do this actually tricks tricks and tricks. Anyway, anyway, I'm done. I'm done going to bed. Even though it's eight eight it's eight forty two. So I'm actually probably gonna go do something else. I I beat GTA last night and I'm it was the second time I did it, but it's so lonely after you actually beat the game because no one's really calling you anymore and there's no missions to do and it's just kind of like everyone's just kind of dead or in jail so it's just it's just a really lonely city it's like you're just kind of driving around and there's just nothing to do you're expecting a call you're expecting to go to kill someone but you just cannot because there's no one else else to kill there's I mean I don't even have downloadable content oh my god I mean this is ridiculous but GTA 5 is coming out in a few uh, this is not even a video game t why am I okay um, that's it for today. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and uh, goodbye.